Welcome to the National Press Club and to this Domestic Violent Extremism Policy Summit. I'm Jonathan Greenblatt. I'm the CEO and National Director of the Anti-Defamation League of the ADL. I want to welcome so many friends and colleagues who are here and have been here all day. And I think we're in for a real treat for this portion of the program. So just a few comments off the top. We recently watched as a community in Buffalo was ripped apart by hate-filled violence that took 10 lives and shattered countless others. This is on top of a number of hate-fueled violent attacks, not to mention bias incidents that happen nationwide all the time. Sometimes those incidents actually don't manifest but are averted as we saw this past week in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, where 34 white supremacists were arrested before they were able to stage a flash mob at a pride march. Unfortunately, by the next time society is ready to grapple with how to prevent, you know, quote unquote, the next Buffalo, there surely will have already been additional lives shattered by violent hatred, by racism, by anti-Semitism, by gun violence. ADL convened several partners today, including our co-hosts of this event at the McCain Institute at Arizona State University, we have several extremes of experts here in the room. And of course, we're joined on Zoom by people interested in learning how we will prevent further attacks that shatter lives due to domestic extremism. I'm particularly proud of the fact that we are joined today by President Biden's Homeland Security Advisor, Liz Sherwood Randlett. Thank you, Liz, for being here. And as well, we have been joined. as well as the Deputy Attorney General of the United States, Lisa Monaco. First, as we proceed here, I'd like to welcome my friends, Mark Morial, CEO of the National Urban League, and Ellen Alberding, President and CEO of the Joyce Foundation. ADL works to identify extremists, train law enforcement, to balance civil liberties and First Amendment concerns with our policy stances, and to advocate on these issues at the federal, state, and local level. Frankly, we do a lot to keep communities safe, but so do other organizations who are also working to protect communities, to do so with a combination of security measures, but also solidarity measures to work together. And at this time of, in this moment where we're seeing all time highs in anti-Semitic incidents around the country, we're seeing a record number of anti-AAPI incidents, a surge of anti-Black racism, anti-immigrant xenophobia, homophobia, anti-Muslim bias. There are concerns across so many communities. And we certainly must work together across these different groups to preserve and protect our shared interests and address these challenges. That's why we've asked our partners at the National Urban League and the Joyce Foundation to be here today to share with you about our new partnership that again, together, we'll work on these challenges. So please let me first reintroduce my colleague, Ellen Alberding of the Joyce Foundation. Thank you, uh, Jonathan, and thanks so much for the opportunity to, to be here today. Um, the Joyce Foundation is um, has spent decades uh, supporting research and policy solutions to address the ep epidemic of gun violence. We have also spent decades working on improving our democracy. and. Within the last couple of years, we realized that there was a huge intersection between these two programs, which has led us to, to where we are today, which is to explore the role of philanthropy in supporting the work that all of you in this room are doing. As a foundation based in the Midwest region, we've seen firsthand the rising threat of political extremism and political violence, threats directed to election officials to public health officers, to school board members, to our governor in Michigan, and to most recently, the murder of a judge in Wisconsin. Shocking, which already has faded from the headlines. These events have led us to the unsettling conclusion that a rise in armed extremist activity and the all too common threats of political violence have become a real barrier to the effective delivery of government and to people's ability to engage civically, whether that be by voting, testifying at their state capitol, or simply joining a public protest. To, this is, to us, this is just not acceptable, and it's not sustainable for our democracy or for the safety of our communities. 
Over the last year, we've talked with experts all, all, all across um, the government. We've talked with experts on militias and extremist groups. We've invested in research. We've explored policy solutions, and we've engaged in dialogue with a variety of government officials, all with an eye toward finding and acting on strategies to mitigate and prevent these threats. One of the biggest challenges, which we see here today, is that the issue touches so many sectors that are often disconnected, gun violence prevention, elections and voting rights, public health, education, and anti-hate efforts. It's clear, as Yvette just mentioned in the previous panel, that we need a whole of society approach to solving the problem. We've got a whole of government approach that Liz and others are leading. We need a whole of society approach. And we think that could be the role of philanthropy in bringing folks together as we're doing today between the ADL and uh, the Urban League. This project, which we're investing $250,000 in, will bring together the civic and nonprofit leaders, help create policy initiatives, help facilitate intelligence sharing about new and emerging threats, and aid in rapid response and mobilization op uh, options to respond to threats so that the collective can be effective in, comb in combating these threats. The escalating problem of violent extremism requires new investments. We're happy to be the lead investor here. Um, some of you know I really like fundraising and I plan to be working with my colleagues in philanthropy to both understand why it's important, but also with the assistance of everybody in this room to offer up specific things that we can support and specific policy solutions that we can get behind as part of the civic community. So we're really proud to be supporting the partnership um, that is represented here at the table. We, we are very confident that these are, this is the right team to pull together lots of strands of our society, um, again, in support of the tremendous efforts that the government is already making and law enforcement is already making. So thank you very much for the opportunity um, and for agreeing to take it on because not a lot of organizations would have agreed to take this issue on in the way that you have. Well. I, I want to say both you're welcome, but also thank you, Ellen, because it's rare to hear anyone say they love fundraising, number one. <laughs> number two, know that we will take you up on your offer to try to catalyze and engage a broader segment of the philanthropic community in this work. Because this work we know, and I think George Salim, our senior vice president for uh, national affairs can test, testify to the fact that it is sorely underfunded. And we have had a paucity of philanthropy looking at these issues for a long time. Hopefully an institution of the prestige and reputation of Joyce can help change and, pers that. and persistence, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go at it. There you go. All right. Well, if you might, as I express my gratitude to the Joyce Foundation for joining us, I want to express my gratitude to my dear friend and fellow traveler, Mark Morial, uh, who's joining us today. For ADL, the National Urban League was a perfect fit for this project. We've worked together at the national and regional level to combat extremism, to protect democracy, to register voters, and to strengthen our respective communities. We've done that and seen that across the United States, but particularly I just wanna note in the wake of Buffalo, which was an ugly, hideous act of anti-Black racism where we had a shooter who was motivated um, by these insane kind of degree of bigotry where he literally targeted the black community and sought to kill as many people as possible. We also know from his manifesto, who's obsessed with anti-Semitism. So it reminds us of the interrelationship between so much of this hateful rage. Um, together, Mark and I have called for a White House summit on extremism, and we're working with members of the administration, and we'll talk to hear from Liz in a few minutes about that. But I'll just say he is not only a person of incredibly high integrity, he's just a person of great values, who as a former mayor of New Orleans knows how to get things done. And I so admire that. So I want to welcome and ask my friend Mark Morial to make some of Thank you very much, Jonathan. First of all, uh, good afternoon to all. Ellen, thank you uh, for the leadership and commitment of the Joyce Foundation into this partnership between ADL and the National Urban League. And I want to thank uh, Jonathan Greenblatt, my friend, fellow traveler, and unapologetic fighter uh, for civil rights, human rights, and social justice. Uh, Jonathan is fearless. He's unapologetic. 
he's assertive, he's visible, he wants to make things happen, and he wants to build coalitions. And I deeply, deeply appreciate your leadership. Let me just try to add some context around uh, today and what this is all about. Uh, we're at an inflection point uh, in American history uh, where we must build new infrastructure, new energy, new thrust, uh, a coalition of goodwill, if you will, to fight against hate, extremism, domestic terrorism, racism, anti-Semitism, and division in this country. Uh, if we have learned anything from the last several years, uh, I was just shocked this morning when the news reported that these men, and I noted they were all men, all white men, had gathered together and had, uh, had, had, had apparently been plotting for weeks and weeks and weeks to create havoc and death at a festival of joy and pride out in the West. I was shocked, but I noted that one person of goodwill, one person of goodwill who noticed something suspicious in a hotel and we have not the details, was willing to make a 911 call and law enforcement did respond. In Minneapolis, two years ago, it was the courage of one person, a 15 year old young lady who pulled out her cell phone and taped the murder of George Floyd. So what we hope to do is, is, is not only create frameworks and infrastructure and convenings, but we hope to create courage mm. and awareness and the ability that every individual can play a role in pushing back, in fighting back and in responding. We cannot be the generation of Americans who sits silently by, who sits and watches and says, somebody else is gonna take care of this hate movement. We have to be on the front lines in building the broadest, the widest, the most passionate, the most intelligent coalition to push back against it. And that's what this is all about. So this, uh, the idea of a White House hate crime summit as we've shared, I think Jonathan and I both have shared publicly and also in private consultations is more than a day but the beginning of an effort, this partnership uh, with Joyce, uh, with Ellen's commitment to go out and do more fundraising. Uh, thank you, Ellen, I'm right there with you. Uh, uh, to build something that is larger than the two of us, we wanna be catalysts to get this, uh, get this started. Uh, I am just struck and, in, and hurt at the level of violence we see in the country today. But I'm, I'm, I'm even more shocked at the idea that violence can be used for political aims. The, telev the hearings on television shock my conscience when I think that in this nation uh, with its long history of peaceful transitions of power it's long history of yes, having great and monumental debates could descend into a place where violence is acceptable and normalized. We must fight back and we will fight back. And that's what today is all about. So I'm proud to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you again, Ellen, and our friends at the Joyce Foundation for the vote of confidence. And thank you, Mark. I so look forward to undertaking this next adventure with you. So thank you.